right, hello everyone, and welcome to Season 3, Episode 9 of Star Trek Fenrir. This may be our Season 3 finale, depending on how things go tonight. Uh, for those unfamiliar, though, Fenrir is a tabletop role-playing game set in the year 2412 aboard a service class in the Sabine Expanse. We're using the Star Trek Adventures rule set that is made by Modivius Entertainment. Now, you don't really need to have watched any of our previous episodes to enjoy this one, but you're probably going to catch um, some references and have a general richer experience if you do. And you can catch the VODs for Fenrir on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Uh, other than that, uh, I have an announcement at the end of the session, uh, but let's just say that even if this is the season end for Fenrir, we have something very special to share off or share with you all uh, at the end of it. But uh, yeah, let's just go around and have uh, everyone introduce themselves, starting with you, John. Yeah, I'm the one having problems with my camera as it started to slide off my monitor. Uh, my name's John. Uh, I play Rast, uh, the first officer, as well as Tavi, the uh, security uh, the security officer. Uh, and uh, you can find me at Chubby Cobalt Gaming. All right, up next is Watney. I'm Watney. I play Commodore Brie Archuleta, the captain of the Fenrir, and I also played the Denobulan Doctor, Alel. And then it would be Dag. I'm Dag, and I play Fenrir's holographic Vulcan science officer, Vassar. And if you stick around, you might also see a little Gorn rascal named Zeke. You can find me at Trek Nexus. And then Aaron. Hey guys, uh, I'm Aaron. I play RJ Williams, Fenrir's Chief of Security, and uh, Lieutenant Junior Gray Jensen, ship's resident hypochondriac. And certainly last but not least, Mr. Matthew. Hello everyone, I'm Matthew. I play Lieutenant Commander Lee Tobin, uh, the ship's science officer, or one of the two. And I also play Lieutenant Cartwright, a Hydran security officer. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and run what might be the last introduction for the Fenrir group. <laughs> We, we, we don't need to talk about tax stuff. Fun tax business. stuff is boring. Business, business, etc. High stream, we're back. Um, yeah, if you don't already know how I like running my games, uh, I like having the players do an opening log. And Commodore, I believe that falls to you tonight. Hi. Captain's log, stardate 89734.5. Our crew heads to the furthest reaches of the Sabine Expanse on a mission to escort a fleet of freighters and construction ships. Starfleet intends to construct a star base as part of Project Icarus, a new breed of deep space stations complete with the latest and greatest technology. One piece of technology from the Mata Hari herself, no less, is called a cryoneural gel pack, which sounds very, very important and useful, but I have other matters I'm concerned with, namely Ubak, a renegade Klingon who harassed and interfered with the search and rescue operation I commanded at the end of the war. He had a Pandora's box full of strategies to thwart my missions, but his favorite tactic was intercepting distress calls and ensuring any survivors were dead on our arrival. 
I've caught wind of subspace rumors that he's been slinking around this area of space. And I hope for both of our sakes that he stays far, far away from this escort. End log. All right. And our first scene is actually going to be moments after you finish uh, giving your uh, opening log as uh, there is a chime at your ready room door. Come in. And in steps Mr. Rast. Hello, Commander. Commodore. I've uh, heard some disturbing rumors lately on subspace. What might that be? You know Ubok, don't you? I've I've heard I've I've heard of him and and indirectly know him through you. Hmm. So uh, Bree will kind of make eye contact with Rast, and they did have a mind meld recently, and so they often have like I would say these moments of shared memory. Mm -hmm. So she is seeing a memory through his eyes now. Rast runs through the tunnels of the hidden facility, the red lights pulsing, matching his rapid heartbeat. He searches for a way out of this place where his mother had created several children for her Romulan psionic experiment. Rast finds a chamber with just two remaining life pods. He sprints to the nearest one and climbs in, double checking the comm device given to him by his Starfleet contact, which is marked with a section 31 insignia. His fingers dance across the console as he sets the life pod for ejection. As it forcefully blasts free from the facility, he turns the comm on. The computer's voice chimes in. Power levels at 23, range limited to 20 AUs. Rast slams his fist into the panel, swearing at the intelligence officer from Starfleet. Opening up a panel, he ties the comm unit into the power of the life pod, diverting the only power available, life support. The comm device was now powered on as much as it was going to be. So the Romulan sent the following message. This is Lamplighter calling for rescue to any Starfleet vessel receiving this message. Lamplighter requesting immediate evac. Floating in space is a sobering experience, not knowing if this is the end. He had now sent the message six times, but since the receiver was damaged in his escape and there was no way to tell if help was on its way, Rast once again swore at the man he had only ever met on a view screen. Oxygen slowly slowly went down. He passed out and his body began to shut down. The computer voice activated again. Life support critical. Terrestrial body found. Preparing for entry. Warning. Aft stabilizer thruster inoperable. As his body starts to shut down, the life pod gets pulled into the atmosphere of Acheron 4 and crashes through the canopy of the jungle. What seemed like moments later, his eyes opened for a moment as someone reached out to him. He mutters in Romulan, you made it. You came. He feels himself lifted from the wreckage, but he slips in and out of consciousness as they make their way back to their shuttle. As Rast is watching and uh, listening to the Commodore, he also shares a vision, a shared vision uh, of the same event, but from the Commodore's aspect, from the Commodore's viewpoint. The rescue shuttle was designed for fast orbital drop. Although it could withstand the pressure of a thick atmosphere of Acheron 4, that didn't keep it from roaring toward the planet below. Bree's EV suit was armored and well-fitted, perhaps after being worn so frequently and for so long. A sonic boom ripples through the sky as, as her ears pop, the cabin pressure adjusting to fit the quickly dropping high altitude. Uh, condensation trails behind the behind the craft, and Bree spares a glance out the tra uh, out the transparent aluminum windows. Past the flames, she sees uh, Obox, bird of prey, exchanging phaser fire with her own ship in the planet's orbit. She's concerned, but not worried. It's in good hands. Her focus returns to the HUD in front of her, the target blinking ever so cl closely, ever so closer as she engages the bow thrusters to slow herself. Breaking hard towards the clearing the wreck had left in its wake, the shuttle lands just meters away from the target. She quickly releases her safety harness while the airlock hatch opens. Her heart drops at the sight in front of her. The wreck was a mangled mess, not even recognizable if she did not know what she was looking for. The green jungle surrounded it, 
and encroached possessively upon upon the scene. Bree's, Bree's feet step over the blackened and steaming pieces of bulkhead and conduits as she scans the area with infrared. A faint green outline of a humanoid life sign fades into view. She pulls off her helmet and makes her way towards him, eyes locked on the survivor. Computer, life signs, she requests. Oxygen levels, 51%. BPM, unknown. Multiple bone fractures. He is drifting in and out of consciousness. Bree kneels and pulls off her gloves uh, while getting the response. She checks his pulse while trying to identify him or his allegiance. A tall, lean, young Romulan man, alone in a shuttle, a broken shuttle at that. Something didn't sit, sit right with the situation. She looks around She looks around them in the dark forest, which seems to almost stare back. Her heart skips a beat, and she looks back down. His eyes were open, drooping, but open. He, st he was staring right at her. He mumbled something that she couldn't quite make out soon after he's back into the void soon after he's back into the void of unconsciousness she bends over and drapes one of his arms over her shoulder and pulls him over her back in a fireman's carry this is the captain i've got him she says through her communicator stepping back into the shuttle she is gone as quickly as she arrived you all may have a momentum for having that prepared early thank you so um, this all kind of passes, I would say, absolutely wordlessly because they're bonded in that way. Mm -hmm. And she says, apparently he's in this sector. Are you prepared? I like, a... to think I'm, I like to think I'm always prepared, Ras, but he kept me on my toes for years. He is a crafty opponent. And well, I'm sure Mr. Williams has dealt with him in the past as well. Oh, he knows of him. Yeah. I don't envy the position, but maybe it's time for payback. Well, that sounds fun. But hopefully we don't run onto him, of course. Discretion being what it is. He just he just smiles and stands up, straightens his uniform. Yeah. I just wanted to stop by. Oh, do you have that report I asked for? He hands her the he hands her his uh data pad. And uh she kind As of scrolls always. through it. Thank you. His reports are always extremely thorough. Just like some light reading at the end of my shift. <laughs> Enjoy. You'll see uh, Jensen has a very unique malady this week. <laughs> Just this week? <laughs> well, you know, he's, uh, he's claiming to be pregnant. Good Lord. <laughs> and with that, he leaves the, uh, he leaves the room. All right, and as you exit, we uh, sort of do a jump cut to the main armory where Vassar and Mr. Williams are having a conversation uh, over some uh, phasers, as it were. What's the rating on that power pack? 89.7%. Uh, Perfect. Right in the pocket, I get paranoid about them just all the time. Maddox has been gone for months, but still his ghost haunts me. We did have that power drain problem not too recently. It makes sense to be concerned about them. Yeah. So how are things going with uh, you and Miss Archer? Things are proceeding apace. Proceeding apace. That's a, that's a very Vulcan thing to say about a relationship. 
It is my understanding that intimate relationships are considered personal and private, and to query within those details is inappropriate among some humanoid species. I mean, it's it's inappropriate among strangers, maybe even colleagues, but sorry, it's not inappropriate between friends. So you consider me a friend? Likewise. What kind of question is that? Of course I consider you a friend. Well, in that case, would you like to know about our meals, our sexual proclivities, our cuddle time, or the entertainment that we indulge in when we are off shift? This one, um... boy, those, uh, those readiness drill um, efficiency is up by 3.7%. I think all the recent combat duty that we've seen has uh, put a pep in people's step. You know, I always said battle simulations can't teach you what you need to survive, but practical experience does. And I think the crew's really taken to those lessons. Yes, your tactical drills are markedly uh, res respectable. I mean, well, they aren't actually my tactical drills, though. They're, um, they're, I, I've always used uh, a combination of Lieutenant Commander Tuvox from his days on Voyager, as well as Lieutenant Worfs from the uh, the Enterprise D. I've also got one um, from a Captain Edward Jellico. That one's particularly brutal. Captain Jellico ran a tight ship in his day. That's that's one way of putting it for sure. You seem to have a renewed interest in keeping things very efficient. One might say that your ambition is spiking. Are you seeking a promotion? Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe. maybe? Uh, you know, it's been, it's been a couple of years aboard Fenrir now, and I think I'm a different officer than I was when I came on board. I do believe you have grown as a respectable and responsible officer aboard this ship, um, a natural progression of your duties from one assignment to another. Given your proclivity to select ever more responsible roles on and off Fenrir, it is only natural to conclude that you seek a leadership role with expanded oversight. A station commander or a starship captain would seem appropriate. I mean, isn't that isn't that everybody's dream who puts on the uniform when they or isn't that every kid's dream when they're lying on the roof of their house staring up at the stars? They want to be in that center chair. But honestly, I'm I'm happy where I am. But I just figured, hey, I took the command exam. I might as well do something with it. You would be well within your rights to seek elevation. What What about you? What's What's your plan? Well, I was never a child, so I do not have plans for the big chair in that way. My experience with Starfleet has been quite rewarding. Um, I would seek to pursue an academic position with Starfleet Academy to follow up on the many scientific discoveries that have been done on Fenrir. Well, I mean, I can just tell you that from the amount that I've learned from you, uh, if you can teach me some theoretical concepts, then you can teach anybody. I would say I am touched. Thank you. Well, anytime. But um, I have one quick interruption. Yeah. As you are, of course, bonding, you both hear something in the ceiling. It sounds like something's thudding around up there. Scanning. Please just tell me it's not a Velociraptor. Well, Dag, if uh, you want to roll me a reason and science difficulty of zero, I can tell you what it is. I was just going to say it's a Velociraptor. <laughs> no, I have something much better than a Velociraptor up there. A reason science... 
any particular focus? You would, biology? Have, you would okay. have one. Complications. Oh, hey, like three successes. That. So you're up to a total of four momentum. You know that life sign anywhere. That's a Jensen up there. <laughs> Lieutenant, why are you entangled up there? Uh, I'm looking for a place to make a nest. I was not aware humans nested. Well, normally they don't. But I've been infected by a rare parasite that causes spontaneous amitosis. And you are saying that you are preparing to divide? Yes, if my theory holds, it'll be something similar to a, 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 an earthworm or a starfish. Are you sure you do not want to nest in medbay? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's, it's far too bright. I think the... Uh, the, the light level would be problematic to the cell division. I know that I have said this before, but the tricorder is not picking up any unnatural metabolism in your biology. And I do not believe uh, that you are going to be experiencing your spontaneous amitosis as immediately as you may believe. Uh, agree to disagree, Commander. Well, that is true. Your nesting could be interfering with ship functions or vital systems. Uh, uh, You're also right above the armory. And should a battery pack randomly explode, it could endanger you. You know, I've read in the Starfleet Journal of Health and Safety that upwards of seven phaser power packs randomly detonate every year. And it is towards the end of the year, and we have had zero power packs detonate on this vessel. <laughs> the odds increase daily, sir. Uh, I have to go. Do you hear Jensen, you know, stomping away or otherwise crawling away across the ceiling? Apologies, Commander. Say amitosis, as in spontaneous cell division. That is what I understood. <laughs> Can you imagine two Jensen's running around here? I do not wish to compute the odds. You and me both. Let's 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 uh, finish up here and, uh, you know what? Then I've got to have some lunch. You want to join me? Hey, what do you know? This power supply's output is 122%. Yeah, we should probably fix that before we take lunch. Will do. All right. And we cut away from that, uh, stalling to give Dag time to switch into Zeke. Uh, we're going to go to main engineering, where uh, currently going on is uh, a bit of chaos. Um, after Lieutenant Zero more or less uh, got off at DSD, um, there has been a significant sort of chain of command problem in main engineering. Um, not because anyone isn't stepping up to the role, but because, let's just say, too many people are stepping up for the role. And it's sort of come to a head at this point. So you have engineers that are trying to pull rank on each other. Uh, you have uh, both crewmen, you know, non-coms and comms alike, you know, debating, oh, maybe I should become an officer then, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but sort of at the eye of the storm as all this is going on is Lieutenant Commander Lee Tobin and Petty Officer Zeke. And I'm going to let you guys take it from there because I think it'll be more interesting than me monologuing. Uh, well, Zeke is sort of pounding away at a console. Uh, Lee uh, looks down at a sort of gaggle of ensigns down there and he starts yelling, Ensign Maxwell, you can't use a phase discriminator to redirect the warp flow through the secondary plasma conduits. That You're going to cause a warp. Get, just put that down. Put that down and go sit in the corner, okay? 
for goodness sake, what did you did you graduate from Starfleet Academy? Yes. Uh, well, act like it. Go go read a technical technical manual. Can I do that in the corner? Yes, please. All right. And an ensign slinks off to the corner. Oh, goodness. <sighs> okay. Um, just everyone, just stop. Just stop what you're doing, please. Right. I, who is head of beta shift and gamma shift? R report to me right now. Then everybody like looks at one another and they do that sort of Spider-Man thing where they start pointing at each other, but nobody is the dominant one. Okay. Who did who did Lieutenant Zero actually interact with? Who did he give orders to? I mean, th there must have been some kind of hierarchical structure that he imposed. He was an android, for goodness sake. He probably knew every detail about your lives down to, I don't know, what you had for dinner as babies. And uh, the same ensign you sent into the corner speaks up. He uh, He actually didn't treat us as anything more than machines, sir. We were components. He never really got to know us. Okay. All right. Um, God, I wish I'd taken that command uh, command uh, test. Oh, um, okay. Here's what you're going to do. All of you are going to sit down and start filing reports because that solves everything. Just nice, nice, easy, safe reports where you're just writing something and not touching the engines. All right. I... I will handle the basic maintenance on the warp core. I want a report on your skills, your abilities, your past experience, the most recent tasks that you had been assigned by Lieutenant Zero. And then we'll figure out what the hell we're going to do. And hopefully Starfleet will assign us a new chief engineer before, I don't know, the, the profits kill us all. Um, Crewman Zeke. Oh, hey, uh, boss. Uh, that power transfer issue that we're having on decks three and nine, you know, with the mag lift systems, the horrible overdesigned MVAM system, it's always breaking down because somebody had this genius idea that they thought worked on paper that but never actually works out in reality, just like all these fanciful things that engineers come up with. <laughs> uh, how's that? How's that going for you? Is that, have you fixed that? Oh yeah, the maglev system, it's at 88% uh, complete. Um, there's some problem with uh, some of the fusion circuits and uh, you know, once that's taken care of, we'll have the polarity, so we'll be able to do it right. So what you're saying is the next time the ship tries to enter MVAM, torsional stresses are going to shear off our tertiary warp to cells. I mean, if we got to go to MVAM in like 22 minutes, yes, the ship's going to destroy itself. Yes, of course. Of course it is. <sighs> Did somebody spike your rack to Gino, sir? You look a little wound up. Well, the Commodore had the brilliant idea of assigning a science officer to engineering in order to try to orchestrate this mess. And he looks down and gestures towards the various different assembled officers who are just sitting down in various corners writing reports. Uh, <laughs> I mean, in the end, I'm a doctor, not an engineer. So I don't even know what I'm doing here. Well, sir, I mean, if I may say so, you're like one of the smartest people on the ship. A lot of these guys look up to you. Um, you you've you been like the captain's right-hand man as far as we're concerned. And I mean, it makes sense that you would succeed Lieutenant Zero. You guys were like probably really smart together. Uh, well, Truman, I, that's quite flattering, but uh, I, I think you've got me misjudged. I mean, I've only just really acclimatized to being a science officer rather than a doctor. I'm not exactly equipped to make a kind of career change like that. Well, you know, sometimes things happen in life that just kind of surprise us. And, um, you know, I'm, I, I kind of, I kind of look at you as like a personal hero. I mean, you you got a you got you're a master healer. You're a super smart brainy guy. And as soon as you know the duty roster said that you were going to be reporting down here, I was like, 
hey, we're probably going to get a lot more done around here now because you're, you know, you have high expectations. And I, you know, to tell you the truth, I think some of these guys could use a little bullwhip every now and then if you get me. Well, consider you try to uh, just redirect plasma flow using a phase inducer. Yes, I, I imagine so. Also some brushing up on basic technical, technical manuals. Um, nonetheless, <laughs> uh, crewman, See, I'm- You already know everything. I'm flattered by your opinion of me, uh, crewman. Uh, it's just, it's not a career path that I ever envisioned for myself. Uh, and of, of course, you're eminently skilled as well. I've heard uh, that Commander Williams was incredibly impressed by your performance in the most recent away mission. I mean, you probably could take over as chief engineer, given the way that you handled that uh, power management system when you were trying to catch up with the Orion slaving ship. Sir, I believe I would maintain that if you had been down there, you would have died to the bullet. Well, I don't know about that, but. Uh... You know, I, I don't really remember how I got on Fenrir, but um, it's been a good run for me. And I've made a lot of good friends here. And, you know, there's Yvette and, and she's an awesome like person slash pet. I'm not really sure where she fits into that spectrum, but you know, it's a surprise for me. I'm going to spend two threat that out of a Jeffrey's tube to your left, Yvette pops her head out and goes. No, it is not feeding time. And it just sort of slinks back into the Jeffrey's tube very slowly. I, I don't even know how she gets out of any, in any case, sir. Um, Just one one moment, uh, uh, Kerman, and Lee will tap his com badge. Um, Commander Williams. Uh, just to just to let you know, I, I think Yvette has. Well, actually, no, I I know Yvette has uh, escaped her quarters again. You might want to send a security team down to uh, engineering section Jeffrey's tube. A-17, she has just uh, withdrawn into it. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so sorry. Um, my lunch break. Zeke? Yes, sir? I'm getting a type 3 phaser. And I'm sorry, but Yvette's getting stunned. OK, but. If you don't set it for a setting four, she's just going to laugh at you and run away. Setting four it is. Oh, boy. I'm going to get it when I get home tonight. Thank you, Commander Williams. I uh, appreciate the intervention. Uh, anytime, Commander Lee. Williams out. Oh, I wish he'd turn that phaser on me. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> OK, uh, so. Truman, um, I must admit, I, I am surprised by your assessment of my performance. It doesn't seem like I'm having much of an effect here. Not much of an effect, sir. I mean, you give a lot of people hope. You're, you're one of the few people on this ship who's, you know, you've got a very strong faith. And the things that you believe in are measurably real. And, you know, you you give people hope in that way and i mean i wish the prophets would have had a wormhole over over you know cestus three that would be nice to have some hope like that for my people because we still haven't joined the federation and you know i just think that maybe maybe they're throwing you a curveball And Lee will actually look out over that assembled sea of officers beneath him again. Hmm. You know, Truman, you, you might have a point. The opportunity has presented itself to me, and maybe this is, well, no, it, it must be part of the Prophet's plan for my life, even if I can't understand it. And he sort of trails off and starts looking at the distance and sort of stroking his beard for a moment. Yeah, that, uh, 
that might be it. And he'll just sort of keep thinking until you interrupt him. Um, mm -hmm. So we should maybe get these guys some duty, Ross, uh, some, some, some jobs to do. Um, and then we can finish up with the, the MVAM repairs and make sure that everything is running smoothly. I, I hear from some of the guys that uh, uh, maybe, maybe we might be getting into some trouble soon if, if we can't help it. Yeah. Speaking of trouble, by the way, did you hear that Jensen might have been countered as Zerillion? Uh, what? Uh, you know, that, uh, that race that was encountered by the early Federation, uh, Captain Archer, I think, made first contact with them. They had that strange method of sexual intercourse where you put your hands into that box of sand and oh yeah males carried the, the children yeah i remember that wow mm. jensen are you saying jensen's gonna have a baby oh that's what the scuttlebutt is yeah and he didn't even invite me to the shower come on we're like best friends we play poker all the time i don't know what you're gonna do i'm gonna go finish up this repair and then I'm going to find Jensen and I'm going to congratulate him. He's going to be a daddy. Well, send, uh, send my congratulations as well. And uh, there's just one last thing, Kerman. I think I am going to follow your advice. I'm going to embrace this new opportunity in my life, but there is one condition. Yes, sir. I want you to be head of beta shift. You've shown that you've deserved that position. You've shown that you can handle it. Wow. Um, uh, well, I would, I would be honored to do that, sir. And I'm honored to have you under my command. This is going to be great. And We're going to do great sure. things. Because I find it funny you hear a scream from below and you look over the railing and Yvette is trying to tear at the ensign in the corner. He's holding up a data pad going, no, for the love of all that is holy, no. And we transition away from that scene to a bit of a, sort of a beauty shot of the Fenrir as I show you guys where you're headed and sort of what ships are in the area. So uh, you all should now be able to see a map of the Sabine Expanse. And uh, it's been a while since you guys have last seen this, and some major things have happened. Um, and I'm going to start pointing things out with the ruler tool here. So uh, this area here to the north of Deep Space Daedalus is newly annexed by the Federation. Um, the reason it's been annexed is because the world of Sko uh, has officially joined the Federation as of a few weeks ago. Uh, in addition, the Federation and Starfleet has recognized... Uh, Pandora's Gate as an actual like on the books operation um, so it's sort of on the same level as the Guardian of Forever where people know of it but it's under such heavy quarantine and guard that you just can't like fly there kind of a thing um, interestingly uh, if you guys remember that living ocean planet um, that has also become sort of a Federation protectorate and that's sort of why uh, the northern side of the Sabine Expanse has been expanded uh, in the Federation terms of things. Now, the Fenrir and the Leif Erikson are currently escorting five uh, freighters full of supplies for Deep Space October. And the location for Deep Space October is up here in B1. And that's going to sort of open up a whole new frontier of exploration um, now that ships will have a second place to stop and fuel. Now, your other two ships in your fleet, the Clement and the Okita, they are escorting their own set of transports. But they're closer to Deep Space Daedalus at this point. And yeah, uh, this is sort of the point in the session where I asked, does anyone have any scenes they would like to accomplish uh, before things start happening? Quote, unquote. All right. Oh. Uh, Rast is just going to go around the ship, um, making sure things are in order and just, you know, Paying attention to the details. All right. And but I did other get your message. That, nothing I, special. I think, and I, uh, I did get your message. That has been noted. 
I think one of those uh, one of those passes, uh, Rask comes along. A Jeffrey's tube is going to pop open, uh, and Williams is going to sort of stick his head out with the phaser and just look and say, "Oh, hello, Commander." Commander, you haven't seen, you haven't seen any vet, have you? Should I be on the lookout again? Damn, she's doubled back on me. Do you want to close that Jeffrey's tube behind me? And he's going to pop back in. And... I like to imagine, though, that it's one of those things where, you, you know, he closes it behind you and he starts to walk again. And then the opposite side of the Jeffrey's tubes pops open and Jensen sticks his head out. <laughs> it's closer now. Uh, it's It's happening. It's happening. I'm gonna need new. I'm gonna need another. I'm gonna need two pairs of everything, two uniforms, pants, boots, computer. Your, your. Replicate the standard Starfleet uniform. Gold operations. Size, thirty-seven. And he's just gonna sort of kill ass back. He's covered in sweat. He's been crawling through the Jeffrey's tubes all day long. He just he just looks down at well uh, at Jensen. Yeah. Okay. That that tracks. Don't, <laughs> These... don't touch me, Commander. I don't know if this amitosis is contagious. Lieutenant LL, please report to. Uh... He calls out where they are. <laughs> uh, on my way. Do, 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 do. She jogs over. Oh, okay. I leave him in your capable hands. No, 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 no. You don't. <laughs> no. Jensen, what are you doing? I'm I'm undergoing spontaneous amitosis. No, you're not. You're a multicellular organism. Yes, every one of my cells is at this moment undergoing spontaneous amitosis. I'm about to cleave in half like some kind of starfish or or, or like a, an iguana without its tail. It's don't look. Um okay, hold on. And she'll like jog to the nearest replicator whisper into it and then like grab a hypo spray that comes out full of sugar water <laughs> and she'll come over and like hiss it into his arm <laughs> ah there you go cellular stabilizer always does the trick oh, I feel my cellular matrices stiffening don't use that word, please. <laughs> stabilizing, then. Thank you. Stabilizing. All right. I. Are you sure you're okay? You look like you could use some food. Well, now I'm grappling with the moral implication of potentially ending a nascent life. Uh, 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 a being that, well, me would not necessarily be me could have had his own life and now we will never know jensen you are to report for duty in 45 minutes if you are not there you will be on report and uh ras starts walking down the hall <laughs> is it 1400 already hey jensen did you know that humans um sometimes they have twins so and sometimes one twin in the womb will eat the other one. <laughs> it's kind of like that. Oh. It's gnarly, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe this was your other twin trying to get out. He was out for revenge. Let's go get a drink. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll drink to my victory. There you go. Vanquishing vanquishing this insidious foe. Mhm. Mm she like slap him on the shoulder. Yeah. Zeke like the this. Lieutenant Jensen. Uh, go ahead, Crewman. Hey, I heard you're going to be a daddy. Not today. Oh. <laughs> Tomorrow? We never know what tomorrow will bring. The counselor taught me that, but no, 
I've vanquished my nemesis and smote his ruin within the bulkheads of this ship. Oh, okay. Um, all right, well, um, so we're gonna uh, repolarize um, uh, the MVAM when you're back on duty, sir. So we'll look forward to seeing you. Oh, I, 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 I don't think, um, I mean, I, I, I've recommended repeatedly that we just don't use MVAM. It just seems to be, um, I'm not to, oh, sorry. No, I would just like to say that as you're saying all this, Alel, I'd like you to roll me an insight medicine, please. Difficulty of one. Okay. And you will have a focus. What was it about MVAM, sir? Uh, just that uh, I'm not one to point fingers at the Starfleet Corps of Engineers, but it just seems like a really bad idea in practice. All right. So, Alel, you get two successes, which means you're up to five momentum. It's the damnedest thing. You know, you were just messing with uh, Jensen earlier, but, you know, now that you look at his stomach, it does seem a little distended. Ensign, stay where you are. She's going to, like, pull up his shirt. Uh, did that... Lieutenant? Hmm. But I... I... I am I'm not that kind of officer. Um, will you come with me to sick bay? What? What's wrong? Nothing. I just need you to see something. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, Krubenzi, could you please notify Commander Lee that uh, I'm I may be a few minutes late for my shift. I'm needed in sick bay. Yeah, it sounds like you got some stuff. Oh wait, hold on. Hey, you moves. Hey, Zeke out. Awesome. All right. So now that we firmly have the B plot going, uh, any <laughs> other scenes people would wish to accomplish? Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, yes, I thank you for the bits, I would say. One thing would be that uh, if they do end up in sickbay at some point, Lee would probably be down there researching something. Okay. You know what? Uh, let's continue the B plot for a moment and switch <laughs> to uh, sickbay. Oh, look at that. I already have all the tokens where they should be. Just missing uh, Mr. Lee. There we go. Imagine and that. It... Jensen's in sick pay. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, <clears throat> Ensign. I mean, wait. Is, is Jensen a lieutenant? He is. I just oh haven't. God. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lieutenant, Um, can you check the uh, in internal <laughs> conduit of this um medical device because i think it might be malfunctioning and if he turns around she's gonna like scan him from the back <laughs> yeah uh, absolutely and he'll sort of tap the console and say well uh i'm just just running a level one diagnostic it seems to be working fine the circuit pathways are intact and no 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 no, he... no 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 i saw a spark i saw a spark there's a there was definitely a spark in there at one point and she's going to like wave over Lee be like, come here. <laughs> and Lee will look up from uh, two pads that he's been working on, stare at Jensen for a moment, look to the exit, back to Jensen, exit, sigh, put the pads down and walk over. Uh, okay, so uh, Lieutenant, aren't you supposed to be on beta shift in about, uh, what is it now, 20 minutes? Is everything all right? Yes, sir. Well, um, Lieutenant Allel needed my help with this medical scanner. She said she saw a spark. Oh, there's something wrong with the device. She's like whispering to Lee. <laughs> right, and he'll tap his uh, ridged nose. Um, uh, okay, uh, Lieutenant, uh, let's consider this your first test. Uh, since I'm taking over engineering, I want to get to know the people under my command a little bit. So let's see what you can do. I'd like you to field strip that device and uh, run a full level one diagnostic. I certainly, sir. I'd be happy to, but I mean, I think um, you of all people would know that I could run a level one diagnostic without having to field trip. As a matter of fact, I've I've already done so. It's working fine. I know. I didn't say that I actually needed you to do that for diagnostic purposes. I'm assessing you. Oh, uh, right. 
practical aptitude tests. Exactly, Lieutenant. Got it. Just like, just like second and third year at the academy. Uh, well, sure. Um, I didn't bring, I didn't bring my tools. Look, have you ever heard that a Starfleet engineer can turn rocks into replicators? I've I've always found that to be an inspiring statement, but I feel in practice maybe an exaggeration. You're in a med bay. Surely you can retrieve certain medical tools that could be of use to you, that could be sort of uh, used in this, this application, right? Think of it. If you were yep. on a downed shuttlecraft and you had to make do with a medical kit in order to repair the ship's engines, right? This is exactly the sort of thing you'd have to think about, right? You're, you're pushing the limits of your abilities, Lieutenant. Right. And he'll just sort of get really serious for a second. Lieutenant LL, scalpel. So Alel's already has like three devices in her hands trying to figure out what's going on with him. Mm -hmm. So she'll reach over, like she'll like put him and like hold him like this and then reach over for a scalp and be like, here you go. All right. If and I then she'll modulate. like, she, while he's doing that, she's going to like show Lee the results of the scan. Right. Modulate the cutting laser. All right. So Lee, I'd like you to roll me an insight medicine difficulty of one. Okay. And uh, I'll buy an extra die for that. All right. Infectious diseases? Technically, yeah. And look at that. You uh, are capped on momentum now. Very nice. You know how Zeke made the joke earlier about him contacting a certain alien species? Yeah, apparently that's the case. Jensen is indeed pregnant. This is not my department anymore, Lieutenant. Take this. Deal with it. And Lee is going to walk over to his console and start, uh, you know, doing his research again. Uh, uh, how's that? How's that diagnostic going, Jensen? Oh, it's it's fine. He's like he's pulled the housing off of the uh, like off the medical scanner now, <laughs> beginning to like degoss the. Uh, the circuit pathways uh you know it's 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 all right it'll i mean this may take a while you may want to get comfortable um okay uh well remember when i pulled your shirt up right well i have some news for you <laughs> Oh, all right. You said you were nesting, right? Right. When I was going to undergo amitosis. Yeah. Isn't that a thing birds do? Human, uh, like a I, human. I mean, yeah, avian, avian. Yeah. Life um, anyway, you're expecting. Do. I'm expecting what? Uh, baby. He'll just sort of look around. Congratulations! Uh, are, are you sure? Yeah, pretty sure. Lee will poke his head out around the corner. Yes, and uh, Lieutenant, I am sure. Good luck with that. And just because I find it funny, Sineri likes walks into the room, sees and hears all of this, and just slowly backs back into the room she was in. <clears throat> so we're expecting a baby. No, you're expecting a baby. When? Computer? Can you check my itinerary for any upcoming meetings with infants or toddlers? Good job, you broke us. It took this long, <laughs> but you finally broke us. No, no, no. I mean, Lieutenant, the mitosis was really, a, you know, I understand pregnancy. It's hard for humans. 
um why don't you have a seat and i'll run some more tests and wait are you are you are you are you telling me that i'm are you telling me that i'm pregnant yes so the agent that you administered to me to stop the spontaneous mitosis didn't work well pregnancy is not necessarily spontaneous mitosis uh, are you do you know how pregnancy works of course i do I've assisted in simulations in, in delivering babies. <laughs> we all had to do that in Starfleet Academy. I mean, it's not my fault that I didn't retain consciousness. <laughs> you broke Watney, good job. <clears throat> I'm going to need bigger quarters. Yeah, you probably are. Lee will poke us at it again. Um, Lieutenant, not that it's really any of my business, but um, shouldn't you think about contacting the, the mother or father or however Zerulean pregnancies work? Um, well, uh, <laughs> Commander, not to, um, <clears throat> not to kiss and tell, but um, there were a lot of them. Please don't. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, computer. Uh, where's the nearest replicator? It doesn't even tell you. It just automatically replicates the strongest Klingon drink oh. available. I take back every bad thing I've said about you, Fenrir. <laughs> the engineers who designed you really did. They, they did a good job. Oh, right. Commander, thank you toasting toasting my my wonderful news um and having the foresight to not ask for two drinks because of course i can't imbibe now it's i have to right i'll i'll, I'll drink for two since you no to <laughs> no tobacco either oh and once you get far enough along I read this technique that happened on Voyager with emergency medical hologram. He transported a baby out of a patient. Can we, if we're going to do that, I would like to ask for Zeke's assistance. He's the best with transporters that I know. I'm a little insulted, but fine. <laughs> Just all right. And I think that's and where we'll call that scene, actually. I'll, just, oh, I'll say one, one last thing. Uh, as Lee returns back to the panel that he's working on, you mm -hmm. see that he's looking at um, essentially genetic compatibility between Vulcans and Bajorans. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Noted. All right. So, oh, yeah. Thank you, John, for the gifted subs. Much appreciated. But uh, we're now going to shift to the bridge where Archuleta and Rast are currently on shift. And uh, Vassar, you're there as well. Lee, you're down in engineering. Uh, and it's right about maybe 10 minutes after the shift has started uh, that, Williams, you walk into the scene. Hello, everyone. RJ, glad you could join us. Yeah. Just barely chasing the Velociraptor through the Jeffrey's tubes all afternoon. Is Yvette still on board? Yeah. Yeah. I've ordered manual locks. I've ordered force fields. Suffice to say, she's a very clever girl. Well, I, I know you can handle it if anybody... I've uh, developed, I think, a grudging respect for her abilities. Um, she really knows her bushcraft. I have this mental imagery of just like this wooden 
structure <laughs> like in a cargo bay or something. <clears throat> uh, by the way, RJ, did you hear any of their rumors? Our Klingon friend. Um, wait, you mean... You mean the the wolf? Ubak. Yeah, I'd heard he's haunting this part of space now. Yeah, it's funny how after yeah. all this time he shows up again. Yeah, I mean I remember reading and hearing from other officers he refused to stand down when we signed the treaty with the Klingons, but I honestly never expected him to show his face again. Well, he hasn't yet. And let's hope for his sake that it stays that way. Real I mean, quick. Uh, John, uh, what is Rast's con again? Remind me. You're oh, muted. Four. A four. I would like Ras to roll me a insight and con, please. Difficulty of two. And if you have anything related to stellar navigation, uh, asteroid fields, or basically anything related to the actual uh, course plotting part of navigation, not the actual act of navigating. Yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a negative, Ghost Rider. All right. Uh, I will use a momentum, though. Okay. Okay, two successes, which is what you need. And I can now show you guys this map because it's what's waiting ahead of you. So uh, you, your convoy is rapidly approaching a area of space that is essentially a rogue uh, set of asteroid belts and other sort of stellar debris. Now, this is also a good opportunity to point out a few things. Um, as I said, you have five Federation freighters. Uh, you have the Leif Erikson with you. And one way or another, you're going to have to go through this corridor. Like, you could divert around it, but given how long it takes the freighters to really sort of turn and otherwise maneuver around this, if you don't, you know, go through this area of space, you're looking at at least another week's journey kind of a thing. But if you go through this corridor, you could be at your destination within a few days. Well, this is what deflector dishes are for. So, computer, is our, is the Fenrir's deflector dish powerful enough to make a path for us? Larger rocks will have difficulty with the deflector array. You may wish to avoid them. Um, I could offer an alternative, Captain. I've been working on a new targeting algorithm for the forward phasers. Maybe able to carve up the larger pieces to smaller, more manageable chunks. Yeah, I think that that's probably a good call. We can align the freighters behind the Fenrir and in front of the Leif Erikson and ensure we are ducks in a row. Just for my sake, could you, you should be able to move your tokens around here. Could you oh. move the Fenrir, the Freighters and the Leif Erikson in the formation you'd like? The marching order, Commodore. Can I go more in this way? <laughs> yeah. It's around this point that you'd get a uh, comm from Lee informing you that uh, engineering has finally locked down that issue with the mag locks regarding MVAM. All right. So uh, <laughs> let's do it this way, because I think you're coming at it from an angle here. So you're, you would be like yeah. something like this, maybe? Yeah, that's better. All right. So, uh, as you begin to execute this course, uh, I do have to say a few things about the map itself. Um, so, obviously, the green ores are to let you know that, yes, those are allied ships. Um, but what matters here are the yellow auras. 
So anytime a ship passes through the yellow aura, that is to represent them dealing with stellar debris and other things with their deflector. Um, that is going to require what is essentially an evasive action roll uh, to not get damaged by the debris that's out there. Um, and we'll handle that on a case-by-case -case basis as you go through there. Um, the option you have, though, if you are going to go on the tactical side of things, um, this would be your standard control security to blow up rocks. And what I would say is you actually do not want to roll effects on that damage because the more effects that you roll, the more debris will be generated, if that makes any sense. But uh, if you all are happy with this initiative order, uh, I can sort of take it from there narration-wise. Any other thoughts, bridge crew? We don't want to use MVAM to split the ship apart and essentially cover more freighters. What do you mean, cover more freighters? Well, we what? might be able to provide them with extra sensor data, make sure that no rocks actually approach them. The middle freighters are vulnerable to any stray debris that might head towards them. We couldn't defend them. All right. Um, yeah, let's do that. That's a great idea. All right. So we usually don't roll for this, but I'm going to make a point of it this time. So going into MVAM, I need probably Rast. I need Rast. I need you to do a control and a con at a difficulty of two, and the ship will assist you with a computers and con. And I'll use a momentum again. All right. All right, there's I'll the starting that. two successes you need. Is uh, someone grabbing the ship? I got it. Okay. All right, so you get the two successes you need, and sure enough, we see sort of the beauty shot of the Fenrir uh, basically splitting into three, the three sections of the ship, uh, more or less artfully coming apart and moving into new formation. Uh, so you now should have access to the three parts of the ship, uh, go ahead and put them where you would want them. All right, so if I understand correctly, you maybe want beta... At... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see what you're doing. You're doing two freighters a section, two freighters a section. I see what you're doing. Okay. Yes, I'm trying to do that. <laughs> but right. I can't do it. Uh, if you hold Alt, it makes it so it doesn't snap to the grid, so it's a little bit easier. Oh, okay, I'll do that for you. How about that? But uh, now that everybody is split up, I'll sort of describe what happens. So as the pieces of the Fenrir take up their respective positions in the convoy, and the Leif Erikson takes up the rear, you enter into this area of space that is just, again, chock full of rocks, ice balls, basically things that probably happened when a planet got torn apart and flung out from its uh, parent star. Um, and as you're going through this area, uh, everything seems to be fine. Now, obviously, you're a little bit nervous. Uh, you know, you're sort of watching the deflectors carefully. You're watching the phasers carefully to see if you've actually got to use them. Um, but as you maybe proceed a little bit in inwards, um, red alert begins to sound automatically as you see all of you on the bridge, you all see that some of the rocks are quite literally rocketing towards the convoy. And I'm going to need, um, and you should have access to a freighter macro. Uh, I'm going to move the rocks so you see what's going on here. I'm going to need the two freighters and Fenrir Beta. I need you to roll me a daring and a con uh, difficulty of two. And the freighter macro should automatically handle that for them. Now, the one thing I would say is that the freighter macro is set up that you can give momentum to buy additional dice. You just have to tell me how much momentum you're buying. What Our is the section... beta? Go ahead. I was going to ask the same question. The beta roll. 
Uh, beta roll would be probably still Rast, because he's at the con of Alpha. Um, the beta section would be rolling a Daring Con and Engines Con for the ship itself. Watney, were you going to get that? No, I thought okay. you had it. Engines Con. Coming up. All right, well, there's the one success for Fenrir. Uh, that is four successes overall, so you get two momentum. And then who wants to push the, the uh, freighter macro? I don't want to see it. So. Oh, you don't see it. Let me check. Could be something on my end. Uh, it should be visible to all players, so just be called freighter rolls. Yeah, I clicked it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the first freighter, uh, actually is struck by some of the rocks and it goes spinning deeper into the field and it's going to take a grand total of three damage to its shields as that happens. So that's the first freighter. Uh, can I get the second freighter, please? Uh, I'll take care of that one. I would buy a, a new die with the momentum as well. It doesn't prompt you for the momentum spend, by the way. Yeah, so let's see. Yeah, is there a way that I can add that extra? Because I, I will add a momentum to this to this freighter roll. Uh, basically, if you look at how it rolled before, we'll just take the first momentum roll box. Oh, okay. All right, and actually, the freighter gets you your momentum back uh, as it nimbly dodges out of the way, but also sort of drifts. Um, into a perhaps more dense area of space. And effectively, right now, Beta, Gamma, and Leif Erikson are cut off from Alpha and the two freighters. Has the, the danger hasn't passed through? So the rocks are staying here? Yes, they have rocketed they don't in a position. To go past. No, okay. they stay exactly where they are. <coughs> well, that seems artificial. I was about to say, Somebody can I scan them to see? That. Sorry, go ahead, Williams. Oh, no, no, no. Just thinking out loud. Yeah. Could I run a sensor scan on them to see? Or I guess that would be Vassar since he's on the bridge and science officer. Sorry. No, I that's fine. That new role. So, yeah, Vassar, if you want to roll me a reason science assisted by the ship's sensors science. Uh, difficulty of two after accounting for your advanced sensor suites. We'll do that. Um, Matt, would you like to roll for the ship? Okay. Uh, would you like an extra die for that? Uh, yeah, I'll spend a momentum to get three. And then... Theoretical physics on the sensor roll? I'll give it to you. Wow. That uh, actually will get you. I have to be careful here. So that's two. Uh, so you have cap momentum and three floating that you have to use now to either ask questions or create advantages. Otherwise, those extra three go away. Um, so your base success. Your base success gives you the fact that Somebody has mounted a copious amount of thrusters onto each of these pieces of debris, and it's pretty much what you're expected. This was an artificial movement of debris into your path. Okay. Um, th are the thruster signatures present? Uh, can they be isolated from the sensor scan? Yes. Uh, my question is, what are you looking for in that isolation? Um, a either um, if the thrusters are being remotely activated, if there is some kind of uh, frequency that we might be able to tap into and interrupt. Okay. Uh, I would say if you spend two of the floating momentum, uh, you can figure out that there is indeed a control frequency. Okay, and that gives me one more floating? Correct. And would I be able... So I've never used something to create an advantage before myself. Mm -hmm. um, 
when when we do such a thing, what are the considerations? So basically what the advantage you just made of getting that control frequency is any attempts to use that control frequency to move the rocks yourself, that will now be possible where it was not possible before. And creatively speaking, mm -hmm. I, I'm maybe I'm thinking a little too far ahead. Um, would it be possible to um, isolate that frequency and um, run it through the deflectors to create sort of a shield tractor shell where if a rock would intersect with our uh, shields, it would get caught there instead of being able to bounce off and move away? Hmm. Yeah, I'd let that happen. Okay. And basically what um, that'll mean is it will be one difficulty less to avoid the rocks. Okay. All right. And so what do we do from here? That's a good question. I still have I still have to do the thing. Just came up with the plan for the thing. Okay. Um Captain, I have been able to isolate a, an energy frequency from the thrusters that seem to be propelling these rocks in our direction. Um, I can filter out the frequency, uh, but I we may not be able to dodge to deactivate all of the rocks this way. What we can do is I can uh, modify the deflector to sort of combine our tractor beam with our shields so that any frequency that intersects our shield perimeter would be caught. The rocks would form a shell around ourselves, providing perhaps additional security to any other rocks heading this direction. All right, let's do it. And while you're at it, scan for what is in that direction that they're coming from. All right. Aye. So yeah, Vassar, you're just seeing more debris out that way. Uh, but what I would say is you are noticing um, that the rocks are shifting again, not towards you specifically, but uh, more ahead of you and to your right. So this thing here begins to move that way. And these two begin moving up to the north. Now, again, it doesn't really intersect you at all, but it has created somewhat of a kill box, if you get my meaning. The rocks have adjusted again. It would seem that we are being led to a certain area as they are moving about like the walls of a labyrinth. Um, Rast, are you sensing any consciousness? Rast will reach out. <clears throat> and Rast, what you feel is the same sort of anger, the same sort of hate that you didn't really know you experienced during your time on the planet when you crash landed, because obviously you were unconscious in and out of consciousness. But you remember that feeling of anger, that pure hatred. You think you know who's out there. He's here. He's here, Captain. All right, all ships, red alert. Shields up. All right, and we are going to go into initiative order after we come back from break. So stick around, everybody. We will be back in 10 minutes. Stick around.
All right, and uh, welcome back. We're back from break a little bit early, simply because, uh, you know, climactic things are happening. Uh, but uh, normally what would happen here is the players would go first. However, I'm going to spend threat to allow a unseen foe to act first. And that unseen foe is, well, not so unseen as three Borel class birds of prey uncloak and open fire on the convoy. So I'm going to spend, I think it's four threat to do this. Um, but red dot uh, Burrell and purple dot Burrell and blue dot Burrell are going to fire on freighters here. So let's see what happens. Here's red dot. Red dot succeeds but rolls a complication. All right, I'll do that in a second. Purple dot uh, does not get enough successes. Blue dot does not succeed either. So what happens is the Burrells come in and it is attack pattern. And uh, in the rear of the convoy, what happens is Red Dot opens fire on uh, this freighter here and tears through its shields, uh, literally dropping them from full to nothing instantly. Um, which unfortunately means that the freighter has suffered two breaches. And what I would say is that if any freighter sustains three breaches, it is disabled. If it receives more than three breaches, it is destroyed, just so you know. But uh, the good news is that's all I can do on my turns. So it now goes back to the players. So which one of you would like to act? Asar would just read out what just happened to the bridge. Um, lock torpedo on the is that port side? Yep. Port side bird of prey and fire. All right. So to be clear, uh, if you do fire torpedoes, I do get threat. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. And All right. I believe. Well, Tavi is our weapons officer on Alpha section. Mm -hmm. and... So yeah, Tavi, if you want to roll me a control and a security difficulty of two, the Fenrir will assist you with a weapon security. Actually, sorry, it's a difficulty I... three because of torpedoes. I can roll for Fenrir. Is it Alpha section? Mm -hmm. <coughs> You're muted there, John. All right, so uh, Tavi is going to uh, spend this determination because uh, he wants to impress the commander. Okay. <laughs> and with that, he is going to uh, he's going to fire a full spread at the uh, the blue dot. Okay, so just so you know, that gives me more threat, but it does oh, yeah. mean additional damage. <laughs> well, the ship roll doesn't matter. Yeah, I got well, no, it does, because he does have the two free successes from yeah. Determination. Oh. Okay. Uh, the ship always has a focus? Yes. Okay, so that's three successes, which means you get one floating momentum. And yeah, go ahead and uh, roll me either the quantum torpedo damage, or there should be the macro Fenrir torpedoes. Uh, Fenrir torpedoes, and I'll spend the one momentum on penetration. Okay. And we'll say you're firing quantums. That is 11, 12, 13. Yeah, so Tavi, you lock on to the Burrell class off your port bow and open fire with a salvo of quantum torpedoes. The first one hits, tearing off the port side wing. The second one slams into that sort of bridge engineering hull connector cleaving it in two and then the third one comes in and completely deletes that Burrell bird of prey that ship, one shot. ship down commander <laughs> Com uh, commodore <laughs> excellent right. job lieutenant now uh, I do need to ask I think someone on your crew has quick action would you like to utilize that 
I think that would be a very good if we do. So who else would like to go? I say you take it. All right. Yeah, Since you're on Gamma. And it's the ship right in front of you that just suffered two breaches. Well, mm -hmm. all right. So let's. Um, we're going to go ahead and see if we can't uh, jack up Red Dot Braille Class Bird of Prey. All righty. Are you going to do torpedoes as well, or are you going to stick to phasers? No, we'll we'll do a we'll do a full spread of uh, torpedoes. All righty. Just we'll just say one threat. thing. Um, this has been. I think this has happened in one of Mike's previous games where. An attack ship or a bro class bird of prey has three scale, which means every time you give him three threat for fire, three quantum torpedoes, a salvo of quantum torpedoes, he can then bring in a new fresh <laughs> bro class bird of prey. So it's like this never ending cycle where we get pecked to death by ducks. Um, but just throwing that out there. <laughs> that was the real cloaking device. <laughs> yeah, Maybe you're, just you know the one, the one. Maybe we just maybe we just do the phasers. <laughs> maybe we we'll just, maybe we just hail them and ask them not to, <laughs> not to fire us. Right. <laughs> um, Damn. Yeah. No. I'm, I'll go ahead and we'll, we'll open up on them with uh, with phasers. Alrighty. Then that's uh, control security difficulty of two. Gamma assisting with weapon security. Uh, cool. Uh, so control security. I have augmented control. All right. So that's already one free success. And shipboard tactical systems would also apply. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right, there's your two successes, and Gamma gets you that too. So that's Oops. a total of four successes. You have two Sorry. floating momentum. <laughs> I got you something. Cool. Uh, let us use um, one of those points of momentum to add piercing. Okay. Uh, remember, it is because you have phasers. You do have versatile too. So technically, you have for floating right now. All right. And is it is it a one to one for for piercing? Uh it's two for one. Two so for you one. get rid of two resistance for one momentum. Let's uh if we have four floating because of the versatile they have to be used on the phasers, let's use let's spend two points of momentum for um uh, on piercing. Okay. Uh any suggestions as to the other two folks? I'd roll the die, and then uh, you might want to re-roll some zeros with the... Uh... You re you rolled control science for your attack? Did I? Yeah. It wouldn't have mattered. His other die was yeah. a 19. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh. Just thought I'd point it out. <laughs> I'm firing the science phasers. <laughs> We're different. All right. I'm going to go ahead and roll my... Uh... And... Come on, Fenrir. Where's your phasers? Should be a macro yes, for uh, macro Fenrir phasers, too. All right. So it looks like you're doing currently nine damage to this Burrell class. And I do have two, uh, two zero, so I'll go ahead and um, spend a point to reroll those two if I could. All right. All right. And that is actually enough that uh, you open up with your uh, lateral phaser array and tear through the shields of the Burrell class. Now, of course, yours isn't as explodey as Tavi's shot was, but the end result is the same, where you more or less bifurcate the Burrell class and send its debris flying to join the rest of the debris that's currently on the battlefield. Yeah, I kind of picture it to be a more surgical uh, application of force, where maybe it sort of severs the, um, the long strut from the, the nose of the Burrell to the, to the main body. Mm -hmm. Just severing that completely in half. All right. So that is your two turns back to back, which means it is now time for the enemies to go. And you're not going to like what comes next because uncloaking in all of its Bro. majesty before the Fenrir's alpha section oh, is no. the IKS Bortus Gore. And Captain, you're getting a hail from them. Captain's muted. Captain might be muted. On screen, but now mute me. All right. So appearing on the screen is your nemesis from so long ago. And he's gotten worse since you last saw him. You see that he's sporting new uh, battle scars that actually kind of mar his otherwise 
immaculately kept Klingon beard. Um, and he's now wearing an eye patch over his left eye. And he sort of stands from his chair and says, <laughs> Well, I see that you fell into my trap as usual, Starfleet. Do you have any last words I can carve on your tombstone? Vassar, open a channel to uh, all ships. Channel open. Fenrir and Leif Erikson, this is Commodore Archuleta. Our adversaries are commanded by a Klingon named Ubak. Don't hesitate in relieving him of his dishonor. <laughs> You're funny. We're jamming you. They didn't hear a damn thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, no, I don't have any last words for you. Hmm. Then I will see you in hell. And Great. the transmission cuts off. And it is the Negvar class is going to power up its forward disruptor cannons, train them on the Fenrir. I'm going to give them two additional die. Let's see what happens. Wow. Uh, had I not given those two additional die, they would have completely whiffed it. Uh, but let's see. So that is 13, 14, 15. Uh, 15 damage to the Fenrir. Um, your resistance is 5, so you would be taking 10. Uh, I'm going to spend one of my threat to reroll those four zeros. Well, it would help if I actually put all four of them. All right, so that's another two. So by my count, you're taking 12 damage to Alpha Section of Fenrir. Which means your shields are almost gone. And I have to roll, let's see... Just one breach right now. So, your breach is to weapons, and what that means is your weapons are offline until someone spends their minor action to restore them. So, the alpha section of Fenrir rocks back and forth violently as the disruptor bolts slam into the shield, and the shields hold, but just barely. Uh, Captain, shields are down to twelve percent. And uh, yeah, the weapons are offline too. Uh, evasive maneuvers. All right. Well, that is uh, that is the Klingons' turn. So it's now someone in the convoy. So a freighter, beta section of Fenrir, Leif Erikson. What does it take to uh, like run and gun? Um, it would basically be a swift task where you would do something like an attack pattern and then you would do a swift task and a uh, swift task is two momentum. Um, but then you would make a sort of a weapon attack after the attack pattern. Okay. So, um, Rast is going to, uh, basically hit the gas mm -hmm. and charge forward. Okay. Through the rocks. Correct. Okay. And open fire on the big vessel. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to say is you will automatically suffer a complication that because you are barreling through the rocks, um, you are going to take some damage from that. Um, but uh, if you wish to do this back-to-back -back action, uh, this is going to be an attack pattern, which is a daring and con assisted by the ship's weapons con at a difficulty of one. Okay, and my precise uh, maneuvering? It would indeed come into play. So daring con, right? Mm-hmm. So my difficulty is actually zero now? Let me double check that, because I ha I'm not sure if precision takes it down to... To a minimum of zero. Then, yeah, it would be zero. And then the ship assists. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, there's the one success you need. Sorry, the ship assists with what? Uh, the ship is assisting with a structure, or no, sorry, a weapons and con. Nice. All right, so, so you we actually got our get a momentum. momentum back. Well, you get, uh, oh, yeah, because it was difficulty zero. Yeah. All right, so you move forward. I'll let you move the beta section where you want it to go. 
Um, but yeah, you open fire with torpedoes, phasers. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go phasers. Okay, that's gonna be a control and a security uh, difficulty of two, assisted by the ship's weapons and security. And I'm going to uh, spend determination for he who dares wins. Okay. Because it's a swift test, doesn't the difficulty go up by one? Or it does. You are correct. So this is actually a difficulty of three. And the roll is what again? Weapons, or sorry, control and security. Okay. Do you want to spend uh, momentum on an extra die as well? Oh, yeah. I'll spend a momentum on an extra die as well. So All right. So that's two momentum because of the determination. Actually, no. It's only a difficulty two because he just did an attack pattern. Right. All right, so there's one from Fenrir. Ooh, that is uh, six S's total, which means you are capped on momentum. And you have four floating momentum, but you also have versatile. So you essentially have six floating momentum on this phaser attack. All right, so six floating momentum. Um, I have no idea how much, um, how much resistance this thing has, so... Uh, we're doing four to penetration. Okay. Um, to give me a total of eight. Mm -hmm. And then uh, two, uh, one for bonus damage, and then I'm saving one for... Uh, actually, no, two to bonus damage, and then I'll just use a momentum if I need to reroll damage. Okay. Yeah, devastating attack momentum span might also be appropriate here. Sure, that sounds good. So instead of the bonus damage, devastating attack. All righty. So eight penetration and devastating attack. Okay. And I'll roll for the phasers. And we're going to re-roll a bunch of zeros. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's five zeros to re-roll. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right, so you're doing a total of nine damage. And yeah, sure enough, you, uh, you know, lance out with an orange beam and strike the Bushtagor, whose name I will butcher five ways to Sunday. But uh, what you notice is that instead of the quote-unquote trademark weak shields that you remember this Klingon having before, it seems he's maybe gotten a little bit more advanced with his shielding, if you catch my drift. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you do cause one breach, and go ahead and roll me a system hit, please. His engines are knocked offline temporarily. Interesting. All right. So you see the power on the Bush de Gore, uh flicker for a moment, and that is your entire turn, I believe. Oh, yeah. All righty. So uh, the Bush de Gore would normally act next, but since I have so much threat sitting around... Uh, I'm going to say that another Borel-class ah, Borel bird of prey uh, uncloaks towards the rear of the convoy and is actually going to open up fire on the Leaf Erickson. So I'm going to give them, looking at my threat pool, I'll just give them one additional die. And they don't need it. Cool. Uh, so they're doing six, seven, eight, nine, ten... Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll stick with 10. So the Lee Ferrickson has, what, four resistance. So that does six damage, which means they get a breach. And their engines temporarily go off the line. <laughs> Alrighty. So that is uh, the Burrell class's turn. It is now the players again. Uh, at this point, I think you need to still handle the freighters. And the Leaf Erickson. I think the Leaf Erickson should fire back. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or Gamma. Yeah. Maybe whatever you guys would like. I'll, yeah, I'll I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot him. All right. Now, what I would say is, if Gamma does it, you're now at a difficulty of three because you've already fired this turn with Gamma. Oh, okay. I thought we did with Beta. Never mind. Oh, okay. 
Oh, Leaf, right. Leaf Erickson's still, fine. That's right. We're still actually in the same in the same mm-hmm. round of initiative. Yeah. So let's do the Leaf Erickson. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. All right. I mean, so Leaf Erickson I, should also have a macro. Just let me know how much momentum you're spending. Oh, I've got Leaf Erickson here. I'll uh, I'll do that. Let's spend one momentum to give him an extra die. Okay. All right, and they roll three successes, which means you get that momentum right back. Uh, unfortunately, their phaser rays sort of strike out at the Burrell, and unless you... What would you spend your two versatile on? Uh, I would honestly probably spend those on piercing. Okay. Then in that case, uh, the phaser does pierce through the Burrell's shields. However, it deals minimal damage, as in not enough to cause a breach. Could we spend a momentum to re-roll those two zeros or just add one extra damage? You could do either. Oh, Matthew, do you want to go ahead and re-roll those two zeros? Uh, actually, I think I'll just spend one to get the extra damage because that will cause the two breaches, right? Mm-hmm. With spread. Well, it'll cause the one breach. Uh, with spread, um, it will only do the, the same attack but halved. Right. Um, so that does a grand total of that much damage but the key thing about spread is that it calculates resistance separately from the main attack so even with the spread it doesn't do much for you unfortunately okay all right so that is the leaf erickson's turn which now brings us back to the bush and i think the bush is going to spend its miner to repair its engines and then um yeah, I think it's really concentrated on the alpha section, to be quite clear, because that's where Archuleta is. Uh, so let's uh, let's see. It's at a difficulty of three. I have four threat. I will give them two additional dice. Bit of a Hail Mary, but that's what we're going to go with. All right, let's see what we get. Well, they didn't need all of that, but oh boy. Uh, I will reroll those five zeros. All right, so that's Whoa. 6, 13, 14, oh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, your shields are gone. Your shields are gone. And that's going to be two breaches to the alpha section of Fenrir. So uh, your first will be the engines, so you lose some power there. And your next one is sensors. Great. Now, the key thing is, you only have one minor action, which means you can only restore either the engines or the sensors on Fenrir's net, the alpha section. Or the weapons. Or the weapons. You're right. That's been breached too. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh my gosh. Is, so, can we even good. fire the weapons if our engines aren't on? Uh, yeah. Let me double check, but I believe uh, that your engines are offline. Uh, let's see. Do. do, do, do. Uh, if the engines are damaged, the ship loses one power until it's repaired. Uh, engines seems to be okay. Um, I think it's sensors that is not going to let you, um... Fire with weapons. Yeah, fire with weapons. Yeah, either that or they'd have to maybe... Well, before I... Before we spend that minor action, um... Mm -hmm. Basar would like to relay a plan to the Commodore. Commodore, with the signature of their thrusters on those asteroids isolated, if we repair the sensors, I will be able to, I may be able to commandeer the asteroids and fling them right back at the Borstagor. Uh, In either case, we need our sensors to fire <laughs> our weapons. We need everything, apparently. Um, so, yeah, let's... So so what do we have up now? Uh, you have communications and... Uh, what's the other one? I'm drawing a blank. Um, life support. Well, obviously you have life support up and up and running. Uh, structure, structure, structure is fine. And computers. And computers. That's what it is. I couldn't remember computers for some reason. Okay, good because we need Vassar. 
we could signal a surrender. That is an as, option. As a feint while I commandeer the asteroids. If you can keep him talking, it may buy us time. Mm -hmm. He is prone to flattery. How do you know that? He is a Klingon. Slightly racist, but okay. Um, okay. I would like to, so we can restore one thing. One thing. Unless okay. you spend one momentum to do another minor action. I'd like to we, restore. We could do sensors and engines. Or sensors and weapons. Sensors and I have to have en engines up to fire weapons, right? Mm -hmm. So engines first, then sensors. So we'll spend a uh, momentum for mm -hmm. two and we'll get engines and sensors. Uh, so you only need to spend one momentum because right, you right, automatically spending... get a minor. What I meant was we'll spend momentum for that second minor action. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. And bring back engines and sensors. All righty. Now, to be clear, that doesn't get rid of the breaches. The breaches are still there. It just means you can continue past the damage the breaches have occurred. Yep. Is Beta right by us? Yeah, it's literally within knocking distance. Huh. But what okay. is so he's oh, passing ahead. underneath Alpha. There you go. The question is though, that's your minor actions. What are you doing for your actual action there? Uh, I wanna I wanna grab the Oh, it's Vassar. Well it could be you. I, I am conferring with my captain to determine a course of action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's do the that the whole reason we got sensors up was to try the uh sticky footy thing. You wanna throw some rocks at him? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, using the frequency isolated previously, I would like to commandeer the nearby, uh, any nearby hits for those frequencies and send them right back at the Borstegor. All right. So this is going to be a control and an engineering. This is going to be at a difficulty of three because they are jamming you. And this will be assisted by the ship's communications and engineering. All right. Uh, would cybersecurity meet here because I'm basically you're basically hijacking the signal. I'd allow it. Right, and I will. Um, how much momentum for per dice? Uh, right now it is one momentum for one, three momentum for two, six momentum for three. Okay. Uh, I would like to spend uh, determination. Okay. Um. Okay, and is anybody going to care if I use those three momentum for... Well, it would be uh, two momentum for a third die, because you spend determination. Oh, right, right, right. Two momentum for a third die. Uh, anybody mind if I spend two momentum? Uh, I'm All on. yours, man. All right, two momentum for a third die, applicable focus, determination spent. Here goes nothing. Okay, that is uh, four successes, and the Fenrir has yet to roll. So again, that's going to be a communications and engineering uh, for the Fenrir. Who's got Fenrir? Fenrir, Alpha, me. All right, so a total of four wah, wah. successes, which means you get one momentum back. And yeah, uh, I would like you to roll me just a regular D8, if you could, please. So slash R space D8. Well... Uh, unless you want to spend a momentum to reroll that, you're only getting control of one of the rocks. I'm going to spend a momentum to reroll that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So you can control seven of these rocks <laughs> and you can move them anywhere within two units. So just sort of point out which of the yellow circles you want me to move and uh, let me know where you want them moved to. 
So each circle, does that represent one? One, yes. Okay, so one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. five, mm -hmm. six, seven. Okay. And all all of them straight at um, the engineering hall of the Bushtagor. The Bushtagor. All right. So I'm going to move these. Now, what I would say, there is going to be a drawback to doing this. Uh, and that drawback is, because remember, I said that any time a ship overlaps with the yellow, uh, a roll will be required, otherwise they take damage. And by reckoning on the screen, I know it's a little cluttered right now. Um, it looks like I need Beta and one of the freighters to roll me uh, two evasive actions. So the freighter is easy. You just push the button twice. And again, for uh, Fenrir Beta, that's going to be a Daring Con assisted by Structure Con. And difficulty of one on that. Mike, you said two rolls for the freighters? Yep. All right. So it passes the first time, but fails the second. I'll roll damage for that in a moment. And for Rast, it's uh, difficulty zero? Yep. All right, one success is all you need. But unfortunately, while... Oh, right, you have to roll twice, because this is two. So that's your first mm -hmm. one succeeded. And while you're doing that, I'll fluff the freighter. So the freighter is buffeted uh, by the rocks rocketing past it. And it will sustain three damage to its shields. And Rast, uh, you get a grand total of four momentum off of that as you expertly weave beta section between the uh, hail of debris. Um, now, what I would say is the crux of all this, of you all using rocks against the Bushtagor, um, you threw seven at them, so I'm trying to think how many damage that is. Uh, go ahead and roll me four. 14 challenge die, whoever feels brave. That'd be Vassar, since he threw the rocks. Yep. 14 challenge die, aye. All right. Reroll those zeros. Well, yeah. I would say the one thing you can't do is reroll this, because these are rocks. Oh. So, okay. Uh, okay. so what happens is the rocks clatter against the side of the bush to gore, and you see the shields quite literally disintegrate them as they contact. Again, almost like he's upgraded his shields in some way. So what it means is all way of those rocks are now gone. That was quite the twist. Mm -hmm. Commodore, it would appear we have an exit route. Um, but there is no damage. It just... Yep, dissolved against the shield. Dissolved the rocks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So since Alpha is in such bad shape, I think we'll we'll move. Well, that was your turn. Unless you oh, want to okay. give me two momentum to act again. No. Okay. Go so uh, I only have one threat, so that means I can't exactly throw another Borel at you. So one of the existing Borels is going to have to go. I think Purple Dot's going to basically just open fire on uh, this Federation freighter here. On Red Dot? Yep. And it's going to succeed and deal, let's see, uh, that is 8, 9, 10 damage. Yeah. So it will take a breach and its shields will almost be knocked down. All right. So that's the Burrell class. Now it's the player's turn again. Does anybody need any minor actions on their ships? I would say other than Fenrir or mm -mm. Alpha section. Mm -mm. So let uh, I would recommend spending a minor action to restore Fenrir's weapons. Yes. Since we did sh uh, the other things last turn. All right. So mm -hmm. minor action spent. Mm -hmm. So since Beta's so close, we'll just have. Uh, um, Who's on, who else is on beta? I think it's just you. I thought there was one other my, uh, supporting Zeke, character. Zeke is on beta. All right, so we'll have Zeke do the the work for Alpha. Okay. 
And then uh, Rast is going to fly under the the Klingon vessel, just strafing along the bottom of it. Okay. Uh, so that is going to be a control and a con. And the ship will assist you with an engine's con. The difficulty on this is just a zero. Who has the ship? I'll get that. Okay. All right, so two successes means two momentum, which means you have one floating. And so with an advantage, can I do something to the point of, is there anything I can do with an advantage to find a weakness or anything of that nature? Um, I would say specifically finding a weakness would require a scan for weakness. But what I would say is if you give me two momentum, I will say that the advantage is, is you have gotten into a small blind spot, meaning that you will have an advantage on your next scan for weakness task. Okay. Uh, we won't do that. Okay. <laughs> um, so instead, we're just going to open fire underneath it. All right. That again would be a uh, two momentum spend. And that's going to be a total of difficulty three. And I will, uh, and I'm going to uh, challenge my value of big fan of living because I'm charging this big old thing. Okay, all out. And so two momentum spend. So if you can take those two off. And then go ahead and take off two more for the extra die. Well, we had the two momentum that we got. That oh, that's just six and one floating. So oh, yeah. you need that to get the extra turn. Okay, that's cool. how I was reading it. All right, cool. And that's what? Control security, difficulty of three, assisted by the beta section's weapon security. All right, so that's two successes. Four. All right, four, because uh, you challenged your determination. Uh, what's the ship got? Uh, me? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Wait, oh, yeah. oh, never mind. I or leave. <laughs> That'll work. Uh, okay. <laughs> so five successes means you get two momentum. Uh, four penetration. Okay. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and spend two more momentum for... for uh, for two more points of penetration. All right, so you're staying oh. at three there, Lee. So you would stay at three, and all the momentum you just got would go towards that. OK. All right, so that's OK. And just fen Fender or Phasers? Yep. All right, that we'll is. Uh... We'll spend a momentum for the four dice. OK. Nice. Oh, nice. All right, so that is uh, 12 damage. And yeah, this time the beta section actually manages to pierce through uh, the Bush to Gore shields. And uh, it deals two breaches. So if you could roll those two breaches for me, please. Engines and sensors. Interesting. All right. So uh, the beta section opens fire on the uh, port side of the Bush to Gore and tears into its engine block, and you see that one of the primary nacelles is leaking drive plasma. Um, so you, you've you managed to lower their shields, but it's at this point that uh, we need to handle some other things. Namely, um, we need to handle the freighter rolls before we go any further because we've sort of been neglecting them. So as a reminder, uh, the freighters do have phaser banks, but you could also tell them to modulate shields or take evasive action. I think green dot freighter should modulate shields. Okay. And blue dot phaser, uh, blue dot phaser, blue dot freighter might fire on the ship now that its shields are down. Any mm -hmm. damage with the shields down causes a breach. Mm -hmm. So roll for blue dot first, somebody. All right, yeah, blue dot whiffs. Worth a shot. All 
All right, let's uh, let's roll for uh, what is that? Uh, purple dot next. What is purple dot doing? Can purple dot fire? Yeah, purple dot could fire. It's fire. I don't have the macro. Purple versus purple. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. Still not enough, unfortunately. It's just they're just putting on a light show for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is Red Dot doing? I think Red Dot should fire at the Burrell. The purple one. Yep. Yeah. Nope. Well, whoever feels brave. I think Rest already fired for it. Yeah, oh, fired. I see. Uh, yeah, that's more whiffs. Whiffs everywhere. <laughs> uh, and then up next is uh, Green Dot. What is Green Dot doing? Green Dot's going to modulate shields. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have shields, though, right? Uh, I mean, like, it can use a... Um... A restore shields. A, a restore, restore shields, shields Sorry, action, yeah. yeah. Button. And there is a complication, and what I'm going to say is while it was able to restore, uh, I believe it's two points of shields, uh, what happens is it suffers a momentous power loss and loses four power as a result. And then and finally, then... Oh, last but not least, is that one in the corner. So what is so, Orange Dot doing? Orange Dot will fire at Yellow Dot. All right. And it will actually hit, uh, dealing nice. a grand total of one damage. <laughs> actually, Ooh. it has versatile too. You could spend resistance. Yeah, piercing out, all piercing. All right. And what I would say is if you deal one more point of damage, the freighter will actually take out the Burrell. Uh, take the momentum. All right. <laughs> so. Uh, apparently this freighter is a little bit annoyed at its fellows getting shot because, uh, it <laughs> angles itself slightly and almost does like a Tokyo drift style thing where it's continuing forward, but fires with its phaser banks and just tears off the wings of this Burrell class, sending it to atoms. Nice. All right. So that's all the freighters, which means we now go back to the Bush to Gore and then uh, who hasn't acted as a player yet? Or is everybody Lee. gone? I don't think Lee's acted. No. Okay, then we'll do Bush Tagore's turn and then Lee. Uh, so Bush Tagore is actually going to spend its turn uh, restoring its breach to engines and to sensors. And that's going to be its entire turn. But yeah, uh, Lee, what would you like to do? Uh... I don't suppose there's anything that I could do to actually influence the other ships, though. You flavor it properly, I might allow it. Hmm. Um, could I functionally um, send orders down to engineering of the Alpha section in mm -hmm. order to have them uh, essentially remodulate the shields and transfer power in order to essentially form, perform the uh, shield management task? Yeah, I'd let it happen. Okay. Uh, so for you, uh, normally this would be a control and in engineering, but since you are delegating, I would say that this is a presence plus engineering. Uh, difficulty of one assisted by the ship's structure and engineering. And uh... actually difficulty of two because your shields are at zero. Okay. Uh, I will actually buy an extra die then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Presence engineering three dice warp engines mm -hmm. focus or i would allow it yeah only one success which means the fenrir has to crit here and again that is a structure and engineering somebody gonna get the ship there i or? got it thanks sorry yeah, so unfortunately, Lee, you bark orders, but remember that whole chaos from earlier? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. But uh, that now means that it is the Bush de Gore's turn, and it has three more actions before we reset the entire round. Um, so at this point, uh, I'm looking up certain things because... 
Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, I think what's going to happen is you get a hail, a, and everybody hears this hail coming from the bush to gore, and it is the Klingon battle chant. And to probably your abject horror, the bush to gore begins barreling at alpha section. So they're going to roll. Oh, I'm going to no. give them. I'm going to give them one threat, which means I'm at a threat now. Let's see what they roll. They succeeded. So as the bush to gore rams into the alpha section of Fenrir, uh, it does. Let's see. Uh, two plus scale stress, so it's a scale six, so it's eight challenge die worth of stress. And it has piercing three, vicious one, devastating, and spread. Okay. So let's roll that, and then we'll do the the uh, the, the damage they've inflicted to themselves. So... Fenrir... I think you are taking four breaches from this. Because it's over five. There's two effects, so it spreads twice. And your shields are down. Any damage? Yeah, you're taking four breaches. Ouch. Uh, so structure, we'll roll that in a moment. Structure, we'll roll that in a moment. Engines are down again. And sensors are down again. So... Uh, those two structure hits, as you well know, I have to roll a challenge die, and if any effects come up, people are injured. Good news, nobody is injured. And then, let's see how much they take. They take a number equal to the target scale. Uh, they take three challenge die worth of damage. <laughs> they take one point of damage, which is one breach to their engines, so they're not going anywhere. Um, so yeah, slams into it. Warning klaxons go across all of Alpha section as the hull is literally torn apart by the forward section of the Bush de Gore. And then as the Klingon chanting begins to build even louder and louder, the Bush de Gore is going to detonate its warp core. So we now have to look up the warp core. Uh, is there a way to use a value to interrupt something? If it's a good value, I would allow it. What you got for me? I am just wanted to know if it was possible. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, at this point, I think it's time for a warp or breach. So uh, what this means is this is going to do quite a bit of damage. All right. Um... Uh, nine challenge die. Yeah, yeah. So the Bush de Gord blows itself up in uh, violent glory. Um, but what this means is I now need to deal nine damage to beta section, uh, ignoring all of your resistance. And then, yeah, Alpha takes another, uh, another two breaches. So Alpha... Oh, five shields... Alpha, uh, your communications are now down, and your communications are really down now. So, I believe like with a with a scale three ship isn't like two breaches is damaged, three is disabled, and four is destroyed. You got it. But yeah, Bush right. Gore is no more, and it is an entirely new round. So, what would you guys like to do? Uh... Are we, is Alpha around in existence still? It's kind of like Swiss cheese that has been basically thrown into an explosion, but yeah, it's still around. Uh, I, w I want to clean up that remaining bird of prey, if I could. Yeah, Rast is, going, Rast is going to communicate out um, to take out the last bird of prey, and that beta section will um, work on recovery of personnel from Alpha. All right. Well, are there any shuttles on on Alpha? alpha no, section? definitely not. All right. Basically, Rast is telling Zeke, "Get ready. We're going to be transporting everybody <laughs> as quickly as possible." 
Easy peasy. Okay, so I got you. Jim, that would be three successes for a uh, for a, a phaser attack on the Brill. All right, and don't forget the ship's weapon security could get you momentum. That's right. Somebody want to grab that for me? Is that beta? Uh, gamma, gamma, but uh, 13, I believe, is actually enough. So that is a total of four successes, two momentum. Yeah, go ahead and roll damage on that Burrell. Uh, so one, two, three, four. I'm going to spend a point of momentum to re-roll those four. Okay. Four challenge dice. Nice. Nice. All right. Now you do have two from Versatile. What are you spending those on? Uh, we're going to go ahead and um, add piercing um, and... Yeah, you know what? If I if I dump both of those into piercing, that should completely negate the Brill's sort of latent mm -hmm. resistance. So we'll we'll just do that. Alrighty. So yeah, again, Gamma lances out with its phaser and strikes the Burrell class midships, and the Burrell class goes poof. And you guys are out of combat. All right. Um, with Gamma, I'm going to try to raise Alpha section. Not getting through. And I think we're too damaged to connect. Reconnect. We're just, yeah. our we're comms just are down, down. Zeke is, yeah, no, uh, no. Zeke is just trying to beam people over. At, uh, at least that's what Rast is asking him to do. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, which... Zeke's, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was just going to ask which section of the ship has the main sick bay. That would be beta section. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, good, good. You are in the right place. Um, then Williams will communicate with Rast that he's going to coordinate with the Leaf Erickson to sort of establish a perimeter just in case there are any additional Klingon ships. Well, the good news is that while the additional Klingons do not decloak, uh, the rocks more or less dissipate now that there's nothing controlling them and keeping them in place. But uh, as sort of our... Second to last scene, uh, we're going to cut to the bridge of the Alpha section. And uh, at this point, I'd like to say that everybody, uh, from Lee Tobin to Tavi to uh, Vassar, Williams, Rast, uh, pretty much anyone who is an officer and can be on the ship, uh, Commodore, uh, to put it bluntly, the Alpha section isn't going to survive the space dock. You're going to have to call it for her. Oh. Um, bridge crew. Take a look around. Let's have a moment of silence and gratitude for this bridge. For being with us as we explored, as we fought. You all are by far the finest crew that I've ever had under my command. And here's to our next ship. And uh, one of the lieutenants in the area does that sort of bosun whistle. And then another one begins playing taps. And as we sort of move away from that sort of sad, somber scene, uh, what we hear uh, as we sort of do an external shot of the Fenrir, uh, we hear the sound of an infant crying and then Jensen going, why is it green? And that's <laughs> where we end the season three of Fenrir. So yeah, what did you guys think? That was crazy. I thought... Brie was dead for sure <laughs> at the end when we got rammed. Like, mm -hmm. I thought for sure that she was dead. Yeah. So. The reason yeah. the reason that I asked if you could if you can use a value to interrupt an action, um, I was going to have Vassar use "Am I more than my programming?" to create a protect or basically convert himself into a Archuleta sized force field. Oh, yeah. the the best thing is, and I can say this now. Mr. Rast over here already had a program in place that the captain wanted to suicide 
she would have gotten beamed out to another station and Rass would have taken her place. <laughs> How data of you. Yep. <laughs> It was, it was it was security security call a uh, security protocol Bushido. <laughs> yeah. oh. Um, I half expected the them to board after ramming. I thought about it, but I was also looking at the time, and you know it. it you know we could have done a two parter, but you guys had enough things still standing that it didn't make sense to do the whole yeah. boarding thing. Yeah. No, it's cool. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Was, I love the role play at the beginning. Yeah, the role play at the beginning was watching, great. Everyone watching really loved that too because I had lots of fun. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. All right. So the one thing I would say for stream is that next week uh, you will still see these lovely faces at the usual time on Tuesdays. However, we're starting a brand new station-based game. In fact, that was the whole purpose of this final session was to sort of set the seed for Deep Space October being constructed. And uh, I w all I would say is uh, sometime in the next few hours, I'll be uploading the introduction. Give it a look, and I encourage you all to check out these lovely folks next week. Until then, bye stream. <laughs>